So now we'll talk about protein interactions, which is, as I already mentioned, an important aspect of proteins. And one of the better databases here is String, that you have looked at in earlier uh, labs. So experimental methods to include protein interactions is, uh, exist, and of course the obvious way is to look at protein structures. If you have a protein structure, you can of course see that two proteins interact. And uh, it's by interacting with other proteins that proteins are regulated and proteins perform many other functions. But, but actually many, many proteins interact with each other and it's very unclear to see how the things are linked together. So you often have maps like this that describes what proteins interact with each other. So you can see the patterns in them, but they are often very condensed. And the reasons for this is because interactions are all different types. There are short interactions, there are just things, there are these gigantic repeated proteins I've discussed earlier, like myosin, or there are even these tubular things like that, or actin molecules, and you have add, you have of course, a ribosome or a viruses that have a lot of interaction particles. So one way to detect them is what's called GS2 hybrid. So GS2 hybrid methods is basically a way to detect that super protein interact by using a genetic descriptor. So basically you have two markers. Uh, the only function is to bind together. You have different types of binders, but basically you have they're only going to be activated if you have interaction between these two proteins. So then you basically say, let's just try all combinations of proteins and uh, you can only get the transcription if these two proteins are both expressed. So you can basically try every pairwise interaction. Obviously, this doesn't work if the interactions are very weak or uh, and it can give false positives if something interacts with a lot of other proteins, they can give false interactions. So it's not a very specific method. But neither are none of the other methods either. The other main action is called tap tag or very used to that. We basically try to purify one protein. We use often tandem two methods to purify it. They use, they use this as a bait to elute what and define whatever is binding to it. Here for either this one does work with very transient interactions, because there will not be survived a purification step, but and of course there can also be contaminations and other things. But it's a method you'll have to do one protein at a time. And of course, results depend on condition, and uh, that's why I have to repeat these experiments in many conditions. So, of course, if your protein is not expressed in one condition, you're not going to find it. And there are, but there are also other methods to identify interactions. And some of these are called gene clusters, gene neighborhoods, phylogenetic profiles, Rosetta Stone methods, etc., and uh, co evolution, etc., so that, that are. Not experimental methods, but they are from genetic information. So actually, if you combine these together as you do a string, you get much better performance. And that's what you do a string. So string, you have this data we looked at before. But if you do this, you see that actually interacting networks are often modular. So you have to have like a central hub of protein interacting with other proteins, while the individual proteins do not interact with each other as much. So you have a power law distribution. So some proteins have many interactions, but most have very few. And then there are some interactions between these networks that are we have modular interactions. And you have sometimes you can also find some motifs that are that are often described like in architectures of uh, silicon networks. And you can divide into more and more things. You have like you can divide things into signal networks, ATP synthesis networks, and you can divide into different types of networks.